Good Monday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. We got lots to track here in today's video. We're talking about a big storm system bringing a multifaceted impacts across the western United States, including tornadoes, heavy rain, heavy snow, and high winds. Also looking ahead to the northeast and eastern two-thirds of the United States for a possible snowstorm going into this upcoming weekend. And then looking longer range toward the beginning of February, where we could see the cold and snow return to much of the lower 48 and Canada during that time frame. If you guys are new to the channel and have yet to subscribe, hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. We're just to uh, just getting close to approaching 14,000 subscribers. So guys, hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Looking here at the upper levels, we have a zonal flow pattern across the United States here in a much of southern Canada with the westerly flow here in the jet stream from west to east from the Pacific Ocean and that's going to be creating lots of those seasonable temperatures yet again today and slightly above average temperatures down here into Texas in Oklahoma and much of the deep south. We got temperatures rising into the middle 70s this afternoon across portions of central Texas and southern Texas. Widespread 50s up here across portions of the Missouri Valley and the Tennessee Valley, but farther up to the north where we still have that deeper snowpack across the eastern Dakotas getting into Minnesota and the north woods of Wisconsin. We're still going to see highs today suppressed into the teens and low 20s across those areas. But like I said, we got a big storm system crashing into the west coast here, especially the west coast of California, bringing all this moisture up through the central uh, Sacramento Valley area here in California, moving into ne Nevada and Oregon as well. But much of the rest, uh, the rest of the country is going to be very quiet, really, over the next couple of days as the system does push into the west coast. We got lots of impacts off here to the west coast as well. Into California, we got high wind warnings, flash flood watches, and winter storm warnings where we are gearing up for very very high winds, very heavy rainfall, and also some heavy mountain snow over the next couple of days. If you guys are still with me on this video, definitely press the like button down below. Uh, it's that thumbs up button. It gets all of this weather information out to more and more people, so I definitely appreciate that. But looking at the setup with this system, we have a very powerful low pressure system and trough, respectively, across the northeastern Pacific Ocean, crashing into the west coast here of California, Oregon, and Washington later on today. And that's going to be providing us with lots of flooding rain, lots of heavy mountain snow, and also the strong and high winds across portions of California this afternoon. And that will actually carry us here into tomorrow as well on Tuesday, January 10th. Widespread flooding rains here across portions of Sacramento, getting down even into places like Los Angeles. And then the heavy snow across the Sierra Nevada mountains, getting into northwestern portions of the state of Nevada. And that will be moving farther east toward the Colorado Rockies as we get into the day on Tuesday. But regarding those wind gusts out there, it's going to be pretty strong. We got those 50, 60, even 70 mile per hour wind gusts here, respectively, across portions of central southern California as that powerful low pressure system and atmospheric river starts to sponge itself out across portions of California on the day today and into tomorrow. And you can see very heavy rainfall with this atmospheric river of moisture moving through heavy rainfall here across places like San Francisco, Sacramento, and then getting just to the north and west of Los Angeles. In those higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada mountains here in much of northern Nevada, we're going to be seeing some very heavy snow. I wouldn't even be surprised if we saw some thunder snow across places like the Sierra Nevada mountains here later on today around the noon time frame. That will continue to move its farther south toward Los Angeles with that heavy rainfall threat going into this evening at around 6 o'clock. And then going through the midday hours tomorrow on Tuesday, January 10th, we're going to see again another surge of very heavy moisture moving into California and the Pacific Southwest bringing heavy mountain snow, maybe some thunder snow yet again, and very heavy rain across Central and Southern California, and it does include the Los Angeles region going into Tuesday afternoon time frame. And then it starts to move farther to the east with this energy as we start to work into the middle of the week on Wednesday, January 11th at around 6 o'clock here with some heavier mountain snow across portions of the front range of the Rockies. But looking at those rainfall amounts going through the next couple of days, going through the middle of the week here, we're going to be talking about several inches of rain. We could see some very heavy flooding across portions 
portions of central Southern California where some areas could be picking up over four inches of rain and zooming it in here. Places like Sacramento getting down to San Francisco, a widespread swath of three to six inches of rain is likely to be on the way. And then down here toward the Los Angeles region, we could be picking up one to three inches, maybe slightly higher than that, just to the west of Los Angeles here over the next 24 to 48 hours. And that is why we're actually seeing the Weather Prediction Center maintain this moderate risk for flash flooding through much of central and western California and then moving down here towards the northwestern side of Los Angeles through the day today. And then that moderate risk for flash flooding actually includes the entire city of Los Angeles going into the day on Tuesday with that slight risk moving up here through central portions of California and even that marginal risk moving up into northwestern California through the day tomorrow. And again, Again, just to show you what this means, a moderate risk for flash flooding means numerous flash floods are likely. This could be a significant event. Many streams may flood and it could be potentially affecting some very large rivers out there, those tributaries. So definitely be mindful of that if you are traveling. And again, flash flood safety, turn around, don't drown. Do not drive through flooded roadways, guys, because again, you got to want to remain alert. If you do live in a flood prone area, move to higher ground if flooding does threaten your area as well. And again, use caution at night, especially if you do have to travel. But again, turn around, don't drown. You do not want to move, um, you know, drive and move through those flooded roadways because it can be very dangerous, especially at night when you can't see those flood waters. Also, another aspect of the system is the tornado threat. We have a marginal risk for severe storms and even some tornadoes across uh, coastal California here as we head through the day today. That's that 2% shading of tornadoes. And that actually continues to extend farther south and east, now including the Los Angeles region with a marginal risk for severe weather and tornadoes going into the day on Tuesday. And again, that is a 2% shading of tornadoes across southwestern California going through the Tuesday time frame. Also some very heavy mountain snow is another impact from the system. We're going to be seeing the very heavy snow across the Sierra Nevada mountains, maybe some thunder snow like I was talking about as well. And then some of that moisture will be moving up into the inner mountain west, places like Idaho, western Wyoming, getting up toward the Salt Lake City area here, and then back across Nevada, some heavier mountain snow could be adding up to around 8 to 12 plus inches across some of those ski resorts out there. But looking more precisely here toward the Sierra Nevada mountains, yes, we're going to be seeing a dumping of snowfall where we could see well over two feet of snow. And in fact, some of these areas over the next 48 hours could be approaching 70 inches of snow. So definitely lots of snow on the way over the next couple of days. And that's going to be creating those major and extreme impacts here across those areas, especially in those higher elevations of California, getting up into Northern California and Northwestern portions of Nevada, even with those moderate impacts from that treacherous travel and the heavy snow out there. But that system won't stop there. It's going to continue to push off to the east, bringing that higher energy across the Four Corners region into the Panhandle of Texas and the Southern Plains going through the day on Wednesday. And that will continue to march its way off to the east toward the Ohio Valley, the southeast, and the east coast going through late this week on Friday, January 13th. And as we get through the day on Wednesday, as that energy moves across the Southern and Central Plains, we're going to have enough warmth across the Southern Plains in the Arklatex region. Temperatures will be rising into the 60s and middle 70s out here. Dew points will also be rising well into the 50s to near 60 degrees especially the I-35 corridor on east and getting through the Arklatex and the western Tennessee Valley. And that does spell trouble for some severe weather here with that setup with a marginal risk for severe storms. A few of these storms could be getting, getting on the feisty side here, especially the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex on east, that I-35 corridor on east. This does include Shreveport, Little Rock, getting up toward Memphis and Jackson, Mississippi, going through the day on Wednesday and looking at the setup here, we got some cold air providing us with some snow up toward the Kansas City region, maybe a couple of inches there of accumulation, but that severe weather threat on the southeastern side of this low pressure system will be there across the Arklatex going through the overnight hours. This will be an overnight threat here on Wednesday into Thursday. So definitely want to have your weather radios turned on for this event. And then that continues here with that. Those kinematics will be there. I mean, they will be there. We got a strong mid-level jet rounding the base of this trough around 60 to 70 knots. We got a formidable low-level jet as well around 60 knots here across the Arklatex. And that will provide us with that tornado threat. Going through the day on Thursday, as that cold front and that system moves off to the east, we're going to have that severe weather threat moving 
move off to the east. We got temperatures rising into the 50s and 60s out here across the southeast. Again, dew points will be in the 50s and low 60s across portions of uh, Alabama, Georgia, and the Tennessee Valley, and even the Carolinas as well. And again, the weather, uh, the Storm Prediction Center has actually included a 15% slight risk on their day four outlook here across the Atlanta metro area and much of northern uh, Georgia, getting back here through Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, and back here towards Mobile, Alabama as well as we head through the day on Thursday. And again, we have that squall line or at least a broken line of showers and storms. Some embedded supercells are possible down here into Alabama and Georgia, maybe getting as far north as the Chattanooga, Tennessee area. We'll have to watch for some severe weather. This is noon time frame, so this is earlier on in the day, and then we're going to see that cold front sweep through the Carolinas, southern Georgia, and getting into northern Florida through that Friday overnight time frame on Friday, January 13th at midnight. The colder air will be on the north side, providing us with some snow up toward Detroit, getting into portions of northeastern Indiana, northwestern Ohio, maybe a couple of inches of snow there. But again, with that severe weather threat, however, we're going to be talking about some damaging wind potential as well with that strong mid-level jet rounding the base of that trough and a decent low-level jet providing us with some spin and directional shear in the atmosphere. So we'll definitely be watching out for that turning of the winds with height, that directional shear and speed shear, and that could be providing us with some tornadoes going through the day on Thursday. It's going to be producing some heavy rainfall. We got some mainly some stratiform rainfall across portions of the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic and up through the Northeast. Much of this will be falling as rainfall. Rainfall amounts here will be anywhere from one to two inches for the most part on average. But the colder side of the system will be there, and we have some colder air moving on the back side of the system through the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and into the Ohio Valley on your Friday morning time frame, and that continues into early this uh, this upcoming weekend on Saturday, January 14th, with some of that cold air wrapping itself around that low pressure system, moving through the Mid-Atlantic and the interior New England regions, and especially into southeastern Canada, and that's where we're going to see that stripe of narrow stripe of some very heavy snow potentially across places like Toronto, uh, Detroit getting up here in toward the Montreal region across Quebec. Maybe some heavier snow up here towards portions of northern Maine, but it does appear that this system will go a little bit farther north than what some of the guidance was showing yesterday, and that will actually exit the northeast as we get into the overnight hours into Saturday morning. So looking at three different weather models, this is the European high resolution guidance. This has sh shifted farther to the north with the heavier snow across mainly southeastern Canada Canada. We do still have the potential for some heavy snow there across northern Vermont, New Hampshire, and much of north central Maine. We could be dumping around 6 to 10 inches of snow across those areas, but a foot, a solid foot of snow is possible from Toronto getting through portions of Montreal as we head through that weekend time frame according to the European forecast model. The same thing holds true with the GFS model actually a little bit farther to the north. Still some heavy snow up here into Maine and even the GDPS model, the Canadian model is actually pretty similar to the European forecast guidance with some heavier snow in upstate New York, northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and much of Maine, and then southeastern Canada, places like Toronto and Montreal still getting around a foot of snow in some of those places. But looking longer range here, if you don't get the snow this go around, the opportunities will be there toward the end of January. This is the last week or so in January. We got that blocking pattern setting up across the northeastern Pacific with that spike in the ridge going all the way up towards Alaska and western Canada. That's going to force that trough farther south with that cold air across the center of the country and the eastern two-thirds of the country, especially as we get into the first few days of February. And that will definitely put a... Uh, Lots of cold air farther south across portions of the Midwest and the upper Great Lakes initially with all of the deeper cold air up into Canada and especially the Arctic's going into that 25th, 26th time frame of January. But watch as we get toward the very last couple of days of January and turn into early February here. We're going to be seeing that freezing line go well far south towards the Red River here in Texas, across the Tennessee Valley and much of the Mid-Atlantic. And areas in the blue and pinks and purples here will actually be well 
well below freezing. In fact, closer to the single digits, if not below zero, farther to the north across Canada here and into portions of the Arctic's farther to the north as well. And again, with a favorable subtropical jet, a very strong energetic subtropical jet toward the end of the month here to the north of this, we're going to have all that cold air. And that's where we could see that snow line dropping farther south from Canada in towards the center of the country. We could see some heavier snow breaking out on the lee side of the Rockies with some mountain snow there and maybe a couple of cross country winter storms potentially through the Ohio Valley, the portions of the Midwest here and the Northeast. And maybe that snow line getting farther south towards Oklahoma, the panhandle of Texas, and maybe even Tennessee and Kentucky as we head through the opening days of February. So thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely appreciate it. Remember to like the video down below, give it a thumbs up, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. We're doing something different tomorrow. We are actually going to be doing a winter weather update to update you on the rest of winter and what to expect all the way through March and maybe even April as well. So do stay tuned to that. I will have that video for you guys tomorrow morning. Well, thank you guys so much for watching again and have a great day out.